Today, we're gonna to be making a very simple social tag, and we'll also be tracking it and talking about different ways to add it into your project so you don't have to be concerned with how it affects the color process. So we're just jumping right in here. I'm just gonna add in a couple of clips. Take a look at these quick. Uh, we'll use this clip just to make it seem like more of like a legit project. We'll connect these up, maybe make this one a little shorter. Where we wanna add this in is right in here, we want to have uh, him coming up and then a little thing popping up. It just has his social media tag on there. So let's have it start right here. And then I'm going to go holding uh, shift down and then my arrow keys, one, two, three, four, five. Let's just do five seconds. I'll cut here as well. And then I'm gonna hold down Alt and move up so I make a copy of it. And then I can just take this all the way across just so I have the full amount down here. And then for here, I'm just going to make this into a fusion comp. And then just so we don't uh, screw up the timing of these, I'm gonna highlight them and then just link clips so that they stay linked together. So if I were to move these, they stay together. Okay, so now I'm gonna go into Fusion and start creating our social tag. One of the things to make sure that you're on the right um, clip, we're gonna click on clips and then just make sure that we're in the Fusion clip and not the previous one because they look identical, obviously. And then I'll close this quick and then we can start creating this right away. I'm just going to bring a uh, background down and a rectangle. We're just going to connect the rectangle into the background and then the output of the background, we're gonna go into the media in and viewing it here, this is all that we see. Uh, we're gonna come into our rectangle and bring this down just a little bit. Right now, let's just stay concerned on size. We're not going to be moving the position of the rectangle, we'll do that later. Right now, we're just building the social tag itself, so let's just stay focused on that. And then I'm just going to click right in here, hit shift spacebar, and then type in a triangle, and then we'll get our triangle, and we can just connect this up just like that. So our triangle comes after, and then we can just move these points right into here so that we have like a little pointer, I guess you could call it, a little pointer here to zoom in. You just hold down um, control and then mouse wheel in and out. I think I wanna round off the edges on this. And then to round on here, I'm just going to add a border, which will do a little bit of rounding, something like that. And then I think I'm gonna move this over just a little bit. So we have something like that. I think that would work, right? And then we just need to add in a text tool so we can put whatever his handle is and I'm just going to go out of here and into the background so then it'll make a merge and then the reason why I did that is because we want to have the text as the foreground so it's obviously right in on top of our element that we're making and we'll put at um, Sam sure and then we can just change the size of this down just a little bit maybe 0.5 okay so now we have our little element that says Sam and you know you can you can do a ton of different things to make this fancy but we're going to keep it basic for right now uh, the next thing that we need to do because we made our little element is we need to now track it to sam so to track it to sam all we're going to do is uh, on our media in we're going to add in a tracker and then having our tracker here we just need to track to somewhere on sam and if you've never used a tracker before, quick rundown of it. This inner box here is the, um, where you're gonna be making your pattern, as they call it. That's just what it is you're going to be tracking. You normally want this to be very contrasty so that the tracker can find a very good pattern and it can, it can determine what that is and then in the next frame that it has to look for, it can find it. Um, so this is where we're going to determine what our pattern is. And then this outer box is where we're allowing the tracker to look for that pattern. Um, there's pros and cons to making these big and small. Um, so it's kind of like one of those things where I can't tell you, you know, do it this way, 
specifically because every project is going to work a little bit differently and every project is going to have needs are going to be different um, but the idea here is that you want to make the pattern as big as it needs to be and you want to make this outer box as big as it needs to be so if you make the pattern too big let's say i wanted to track this cap and i make the pattern really big right for this cap what's going to happen is that big box is always going to find that cap but it might like uh, dance around so it might um, what's referred to as like sliding so it might be on the point but if you're watching it it might slide around a bit so that is like one of the downsides to that if you make this outside box too big it might find something else in the frame that might look sort of similar to this and then it might you know if we're looking here it might you know start tracking here and then jump over here and then jump back over here and uh, the pattern each frame it's going to be looking for this so it's just something to be aware of so I'm just gonna pretty much leave it the size that it is and because I think that that's fine obviously if something's moving very quick from uh, frame to frame and it's jumping so like if let's say this outside box if the next frame that um, pocket wasn't in this box obviously I'm gonna struggle with this so I would need to make this box bigger um, so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to come to the beginning here and then set this up so it's on his pocket I think that looks good and then uh, going across the top here we have track back from the beginning track backwards from its current position stop obviously track forward from its current position and track forward from the beginning uh, what we're gonna and then here is how many tracking how many times do you want it to make a keyframe for a tracking point? I'm gonna set this to five uh, If you have really fast motion, you might want to increase this what ends up happening is If you have it very consistent the tracker is going to look like it's jittering around instead of kind of being smooth with the animation um, sometimes you need it if you know you have stuff moving very quick if you have stuff moving slower like this shot's kind of moving slower because it's in slow-mo um, we can extend that and then what will happen is there'll be a keyframe here and a keyframe here and then in between those two points it's just like making any other keyframe it will travel between those two and it'll make it look a little smoother um, and then coming down here, this is, if you're getting very precise with your tracking, you can have it track particular channels, or you can have it track the luminance values or the alpha channel. Um, so yeah, I would just leave that unless you know, you're know you really struggling with uh, tracking a subject. So I'm just going to track from the beginning, click track. It's gonna track all the way through. And there we go. And it looks like our tracker kind of undid itself right here. So let's come back to the last good track point, which was right here. So now I'm just going to make this box a little smaller and actually make this box a little bit bigger. So now I have this track point. I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. And then I'm just going to track forward from this position and it'll end those last couple and clean them up. So now I have a good track. Okay, so now that I have all of that tracking information, now I need to pass it so that this obviously moves with it. Because all of this stuff gets fed into a merge, which everything's coming in through the foreground, I can use this merge to do the movement, all right? So I just need to get this center position, as you can see, all these values, I need to get the tracking data in here. So to do that, I'm just going to highlight both of these. I'm gonna highlight the merge and the tracker let's actually drop this down so we have this um, we can see all in here I'm gonna right click right in here go to expression and now I have this little value here I'm gonna grab this plus and hold down come up to our tracker and it'll open it up and then I'm gonna come down to track center and then when I do that now our uh, little uh, element is now tracked to him obviously it's not in the best positions I feel like it'd be kind of weird to track something that says his name to his neck. So I'm gonna move it down to his chest. And to do that, um, all this stuff feeding right before our merge, I'm going to come in and, and do a transform node. And then in this transform node, I'm just going to pull it down just a little bit. So maybe it's like center mass for him. So we come back and now it's saying, okay, that's him. 
and it's right in the center of his chest. So I think that that looks good. The other thing that I'm going to do is I need to do a little animation on, animation off. As I said, this is just a very basic one. So I'm just going to come to the beginning here and we have this blend, which is kind of like a luminance, I guess you could say. I'm gonna just keyframe um, the beginning. I have it over at zero, frame zero. I'm gonna keyframe it down to nothing. Come to, let's say, frame 10. I'm gonna bring it up to one. And then uh, let's do 35. I'm just gonna click the keyframe because I want it to stay consistent through this whole thing at one. And then come to 45, bring it down. And there we have it. We have a little social tag that's tracked to our guy that looks pretty good. And now, if we look at this media out, we have everything going into this media out, right? We have our image, we have the tracking data, we have all of this stuff that builds this little element and then it's feeding out. So if we come to our timeline, everything is looking great here, right? But there's one little problem that, that uh, will arise doing it this way. It's when we come over to the color page because this particular uh, video clip has all of this uh, image, we now need to color it, right? So let's say we wanted to color this and let's just use our uh, gain and let's say we want it to, to be a warmer day, right? So we make it a warmer day. Obviously, it's probably not a great I would do, but just for uh, what I'm trying to explain here, I'm just going to make it a warmer day. And this shot is obviously the same shot, so I wanna copy that grade over. So now I copy that grade over, right? Everything looks good, but if we look at this and we go full screen, what you'll notice is that all this white is now yellow. And that's not how we wanted this to look. Yes, we wanted the shot to be this color, but we don't want to have our elements that we uh, brought into the project to also be colored because we could add a bunch of stuff in here. Like we could add, you know, let's say this was for Twitter. So we could bring in Twitter bird and adding that yellow would also be on top of the blue bird. And you know, then we would have all of these different problems. So the workaround would be that we want to just have this clip, but we want to have this element on top. The cool thing that we can do is we can come back into our uh, project here. Obviously it goes from the edit page into fusion and then into the color grade. From the color grade, it gets then displayed back on the edit page. So that's why we don't see color here. Um, what we could do is we could actually break this, right? And then just bring in a background node, have the background node go across and then just have this transparent. So now we just have this like little animation, right? Of this going around. So now we're getting somewhere because now we can come over to here. Obviously it still looks the same because this particular video clip, we still have that color on it. So let's come back over to our color page and now let's just pull this, uh, the values from here. So it uncolors this, right? And let's go back over to the edit page. Now, all of this is still the color, but in the background, we still have that same video clip and it's colored. And that's because this particular uh, project here only has that little element that we made. So if we can turn that element on and off, now it's only that element, but we have the color grade on, only on this one track. So when we go through here and color, we don't have to color this fusion clip. We can just color all of our clips how we want to and that color is fusion clip. And then the elements in that fusion clip don't get colored also. So I just wanted to show you guys a cool way to add you know, a little social tag. Maybe in the future, I'll do like a cooler animation social tag, but I wanted to just show a briefly how to make an element, track it, and then also be able to still color your project and not have it affect the elements in which you create it. So with that being said, let me know in the comments what you guys think about this one. If you have any ideas or suggestions you would like to see in the future, leave them down below. Again, my name's JR and thanks for watching.